Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Introduce yourself and tell us what you do. My name is Tari Manamike. I'm a radio producer, a radio presenter. I'm an author, documentary maker. I am also a mom and a whole lot of other things that I have uh, forgotten. You do quite a lot. I do. I do. I do. I like to spread my wings. Uh -huh. Do you have a role model? And who are they? Yes, I do have a role model. I have two, my mom and my dad. I like them because uh, I've spent quite a significant chunk of time with them. I've gone to ask them questions about their lives and how they got to where they are. And they've given me a lot of information. So those are the two role models that I have. In your opinion, is it important to have outstanding women to look up to? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think we need more female role models, especially for young women to say, well, I've got so and so that I can look up to. And this person will inspire me uh, instead of having a hypothetical person that will inspire you. So, yeah, I think it's great. We must have uh, female role models. Why is it important to amplify the work of the feminist movement? I think it's misunderstood. The word feminist, at least in my experience, when I've spoken to people about feminism, they're like, what is that? Why? This movement, you want to unsettle our culture? I'm like, no, this is not why we're here. Um, so I think it's important for people to really understand what feminism is all about. It's about empowering women and uh, women's rights are human rights and human rights are women's rights. So everybody really needs to understand that. And I think we'll have a better world when we do that. In what way do you think campaigns like the 16 Days Against GBV can help to end violence? Um, there's a lot of um, awareness that needs to happen. There's a lot of education that needs to take place. A lot of destigmatization and sensitization to gender-based violence. All these things, including cultural perceptions and attitude, need to be spoken about. That way, when we address the light or when we shine the light on these issues, we'll be able to come together and come to hopefully one big conclusion, where at least it's a starting point that we realize that it's not working. Gender-based violence does not work for anyone. But if we're kinder, if we love one another, then we've got a better world. So we have to talk about it. What color is associated with the campaign? Orange, orange, I know that, it's orange. And what is this year's theme? This year's theme is Orange, the world, and domestic violence now. What does that theme mean to you? It means I have to take my part in this. I have to raise my voice um, on issues to do with domestic violence and make sure that the world really knows that this is what's happening. And I think I'm doing well. So why 16 days? Why not the rest of the year? Well... If we talk about it every day, it's good, but we've got many other things that are also taking place within the year. But if we have this 16 days where the whole world is focusing on this, spotlighting on this, then we will get the awareness that we need. So it's an important time for us to talk about it. 16 days are good, I think. Who should participate in the 16 days against GBV campaign? Oh, I think young boys and girls need to talk about it. Um, young men and women. We also have the older generation that needs to talk about it. I'll tell you why. We need to focus on the young boys and girls because these are still at the young learning stage. So we have to catch them young and introduce uh, these concepts. We have to talk to the young men and women who are involved in gender-based violence, where at least, you know, that's the, the um, greater part of the population that suffers or endures domestic um, abuse. And then we talk to the older people because they have experienced um, gender-based violence. So... They know one or two things that they can advise to the young people as well to know what to avoid. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. What forms of GBV do you know? Oh, I know a lot. I know a lot. I will show off right now. I know uh, physical violence. I know psychological violence, emotional violence, financial um, violence. There's also domestic violence, which is the intimate partner violence. We also have sex um, trade, sex trafficking, slavery, and child marriages. Mm. Would you say there's been progress that's been made since 1991 when the campaign originated? 
Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. There have been, I mean, since 1991, I was a young child. Back in 91, I did not know anything about GBV. But look at me now, I'm grown, I'm 35. I'm actually advocating, I'm talking about this. So you can imagine how many young people were there in 1991 who have amplified their voices and taken a stance and said, you know what, I'm going to use my voice for something. So it's done really well. What one thing would you say to the group that started the campaign? Thank you, ladies. Without you, I, I wouldn't be talking about this. I wouldn't even know about this. There's so many organizations that have started campaigns to support this cause. There are many people as well who have been helped. And uh, I think it's a great thing. So well done and thank you. And I wish I could have, uh, I could reach you in person to just say, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Do you feel that after 30 years, significant progress has been made through the campaign? Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Significant progress has been made. We have several organizations now um, dealing with issues to do with gender-based violence. There have been responses that have been crafted in terms of laws and policies all over the world. So we are making strides one day at a time. Do you think GBV can be eradicated? I don't know about eradicated. I think we're a long way off. But I think we can prevent it. I really think we can prevent it. And it's through dialogue, through communication, through raising awareness and changing perceptions and attitudes. And if we do that, then hopefully in a few years to come, we will be able to eradicate violence from our world. Has the pandemic affected issues around GBV in any way? Oh, yes, absolutely. It has. So during the lockdown, I moved around and I did a documentary on COVID-19 and its impact on domestic violence. And what I found out was quite intriguing. It was also sad at the same time. I got to interview men and women, young children as well, about domestic violence happening in their neighborhoods. And because people were locked down, they, some of them were locked down with the abusers. They couldn't go anywhere. Some of them did not have any money to, to buy food and all of that, and that caused some issues in their homes. And sadly, for some young children, they were forced into uh, commercial sex work because they needed to provide for themselves. So COVID-19 has done a number. And also looking at organizations that ordinarily would help victims of domestic violence, they had no way of reaching these um, victims so that they could help them. So it has been a terrible period. What's one challenge you have faced in trying to fight GBV? Well, not just one challenge, many challenges. Firstly, the fact that I'm a woman. <laughs> You've got people who will say, well, you know, because you're a woman and you're talking about domestic uh, gender-based violence, we don't want to listen to you. Perhaps if it was a different phase. Some men have gotten tired of this conversation, so that has been difficult. There are also people who are of the opinion that domestic violence is normal. Gender-based violence is normal. A man has to beat up his wife to show that he's, uh, you know, he's the man of the house or he loves her or some warped thinking like that. And um, it's kind of difficult. In fact, it is difficult to change those perceptions. So I'll say those have been the greatest challenges for me. What do you think needs to be done to increase or raise more awareness on G against GBV? We need to educate our people. We need to do that from a very, very young age. Um, we need to talk about it. What does gender mean? Because that's another um, confusing aspect. People don't really understand. When you say gender, sometimes people think it's women. For that reason, people automatically shut off so they don't want to talk about it. But if we start from educating the people, what does gender mean? What are human rights? What are women's rights? Why is it important for this woman to be safe and free from GBV? And we look at the economic impact. I think that will make a difference. What has been the one most memorable high for you when raising awareness against GBV? I wouldn't call it one high. I've had several interactions. My many, many highs have been from the interactions that I've had with the people. Them trusting me and sharing their stories. As you know, victims or survivors of domestic violence generally do not like to talk about these issues. So for me to approach them and, uh, you know, ask them their story and then be willing to talk to me, those were many highs, I'll say. That has been the best part. And I get to relay this information to the public and hopefully they trust me and they're also able to change their behavior. Where can people who experience GBV get help? 
I am happy about this one. Many people have gotten on board with fighting GBV. So you've got uh, Padari Men's Forum, which is an organization that specifically deals with domestic violence against men. Not just domestic violence, but several other issues that affect um, men and contribute to domestic violence. Then we have Shamariye Manaskana. Remember, I mentioned that one of the forms of domestic violence or gender-based violence is child marriages. So what Shamariye Manaskana does is that they take these young girls under their wing and they rescue them, they educate them, they empower them and literally save them from child marriages. You have Adult Rape Clinic, which is an organization whose um, vision I love and mission I love. They are there to help victims of rape services absolutely free as well and they're right there by paddling at for a hospital and then you've got Musasa project which also exists for women and children who are victims of gender-based violence sometimes a woman is um, violated and she's chased away from the home she doesn't know where to go but Musasa project is there to help the women so those are the four that i'll just mention right now but of course there are many more how best can society assist with fighting against uh, gbv Oh, we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it. And for me, it's the people who are in charge. We've got the lawmakers, the legislators. We've got the church leaders. They have a responsibility. We also have people who are there in government. I think they are supposed to talk about this, denounce gender-based violence, and not really just wait for the 16 days to talk about this, but you know, take a stance and say, I condemn this. This is not something that we need to, um, to do. I mentioned the lawmakers because they're responsible for legislation. Right now, Zimbabwe doesn't have a sexual harassment law, for example. So if I am violated at work, sexual harassment, um, what, how do we define harassment? What crime has been broken? So it becomes very, very difficult. And you've got a lot of sexual harassment that is rife, that takes place. But unfortunately, nothing ever happens to these people. What does one need to do if they want to join the fight against GBV? I think, firstly, uh, one needs to educate themselves on all these issues. What is domestic violence? What are the forms of domestic violence? Who are the victims of domestic violence? Who are the perpetrators of domestic violence? And after, what does the law say about domestic violence? And after you have comprehensively read or understood these issues, you take a stance and you say, I am standing for this cause, I'm championing this cause, because like we said, there are many facets to domestic violence. Of course, you can talk about all of them, but you can be a champion against child marriages. You can be a champion against psychological abuse, which obviously affects our mental health. Let's not even start on that. The numbers are absolutely crazy in this country, but we've got to have the conversations amongst our peers. And then we take a stance and we say, I will talk about gender-based violence and uh, this is me, I'm amplifying my voice. Uh, it's interesting you raised that point on championing uh, messages uh, against gender bias violence. Yeah. So uh, what can one do if they know a victim of GBV? I'm, uh, I'm, a strong, uh, I'm of a strong opinion that this is our problem. It's not their problem right there because it can also happen to me. So for that reason, I need to empathize. I need to understand. I need to reach out. I need to be kind and listen to what my neighbor is saying if she's the one who's going through GBV. I can't be judgmental, but I have to listen and I have to direct them to the people who can help them. We've got the ZRP, um, a victim-friendly unit. They will be able to sit down with her and her partner and um, mitigate and be able to assist. So standing there, just watching these things happen is, is a terrible thing. And I think you're just as guilty if you don't do anything. Yeah. Does your organization have a policy on GBV? Well, I wouldn't say our organization has a policy um, on GBV, but it has a policy against um, sexual harassment. Okay, so it has gone to great strides to educate the people, its employees about what sexual harassment is and how um, women can be safe from, um, from sexual harassment. Has having that policy helped for the organization? 
Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it has. Because in media, a lot of uh, the people who are there are women, okay? And there's a lot of sexual harassment stories, you know, the Me Too movement and many other movements that are happening across the world. So educating um, the women about sexual harassment, having trainings and policies has gone to, uh, has gone a great way in, um, in preventing sexual harassment. If anything, if somebody comes to me and is trying to sexually harass me, I can, uh, you know, refer to the policy and say, well, this, sir, is not supposed to be happening. Uh, whereas before that, and I know many other organizations don't have that, so it becomes very problematic. The work environment becomes toxic. So I'm glad that at least my organization has done something really good about this. And I'm also able to share information. I'm also able to train other people on these sexual harassment policies and what they should look like. Mm. Personally, how have, are you raising awareness this year? Um, I have sons. I have sons. So they are my first people that I talk to, that I tell about um, GBV. I educate them because I don't think it's enough for us to just talk to women. And I want them to grow up into responsible citizens, to be responsible men who do not violate anyone's rights. So they're my first port of call. But secondly, I'm a radio producer and presenter. One of the things that I've done is use my platform to raise awareness on issues to do with um, GBV against people living with disability and HIV and discrimination. Also talking about mental health and GBV, which are real issues. So it is my hope that my voice goes out to the world and actually makes a difference. Right. Do you as an organization have any activities planned for beyond the 16 days period? Yes, we'll talk about sexual violence as well, which is something that perhaps in our society people don't really like to talk about in the open, but we've got to talk about this. We've got to have dialogue, bring in the men and the women so that it is a continuous process and people don't forget that, you know what, we care, we're still here, we're in the information dissemination business and um, you are the target for receiving this information. So we're doing something. Earlier on, you mentioned lawmaking as a critical component against in the fight against GBV. Do you think the state has a role to play in this fight? Lawmakers need to familiarize um, themselves with the statistics from the Zimbabwe Republic Police. We've got people who are being murdered on a daily basis. We have people who are being raped. Um, you know, you catch a lift and you're raped. And these are real issues. So it takes the lawmakers to read these issues, read into the statistics and realize that something is wrong and something must be done. They are there to make sure that we live in a safe world. It's not enough um, to not pay attention to these issues. It just isn't. So they must do something. They must stand for something. What do you think they must do? Well, um, firstly, they need to conscientize the public. I would appeal to the members of parliament to stand for something like I'm saying. So someone says, I'm standing against child um, marriages. I'm standing against um, psychological abuse, right? Raise awareness on mental health, but also propose bills, right? Propose bills that will be turned into law to make some of these things criminal. I'm already glad some of them um, made the child marriages uh, a law. So you can't do that anymore. Now imagine what the world would be like, what Zimbabwe will be like if these lawmakers really read into this and make a decision that this is the world that we're going to go in, that it is criminal for you to um, perpetrate violence against somebody else. Do you have a quick message to young women and girls? Always. I always do. I always do. So I'm a firm believer in that you are the artist of your life. You've got the paintbrush, okay? So imagine what you're picturing. That's the vision. What you're painting. That's the vision for your life. And nobody else shares this vision. So you must have your own vision. The most important thing, do not hand that paintbrush to anybody. Because when you do that, it means you're, you're giving up your power and you can't do that. The world needs you. Stand for something. Use your voice. Be kind and make a difference in the world. Thanks, Tori. It's been great catching up with you. You're welcome. Thank you. I've got to go home now. It's been a Take care.